minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, The vent and show host, Aaron Abu, welcome you to a place where you can get whatever is bothering you off your chest and where your voice matters. Get updates about trending topics, participate in the Yummies and Top Shelf Recipe Contest, and be introduced each week to new artists with our Artist Discovered series. Put our show hotline telephone number on your speed dial is 941-486-5836. And now, here is our show host, Aaron Abu. Hey, howdy, folks. How are y'all doing out there? I'm doing fine. Welcome to the premiere of The Vent. So, season one, episode one, never forget this moment because it's going to be special. I'm here with my, my guest, uh, Rich Suggs, who I've been, had the pleasure of joining you on your radio show on uh, WKDW 97.5. Did I say that? Yes, you did. Did I say that right? 97.5. Are you sure Real you don't community. drive no NASCAR, man? You always look like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> ah, little Richard Petty here. <laughs> now, I know I know that we uh, we are not social distancing because um, we We're almost lived Broke together. <laughs> well, we took our temperatures. We did. The old-fashioned one. The old-fashioned <laughs> I'm sorry, I stole that one from I you. know, I know you did. <laughs> sorry about that, man. So, um, but anyway, I've, I've had the pleasure of being on your radio show, I think, three times, four yeah, times, three four, four times, I think. And went down there and played some music for you guys. Yes, you did. Had some fun, and then I met you... At, at church. At church. Yeah, you came and did an, a, a concert at the church here in... Um, on 776 locally, if you know where that is, in uh, beautiful South Gulf Cove, Florida. You look like a Southern Baptist kind of guy, right? Oh, Lutheran, thank <laughs> Lutheran. you. Oh, you're one of those. <gasps> Lutheran. Lutheran. So um, anyway, we're going to go over some hot topics with you uh, first thing for about five minutes or so. And um, um, Lisa Marie Presley's son, uh, Danny, uh, at 27 years old, uh, died this past week of uh, suicide and um, I wanted to just bring that up because um, you know it's something that we know goes on a lot um, you know I have a history of at one time wanting to uh, end my life and I can only imagine how many folks out there right now right. are maybe at a desperate point where they maybe not know that there's another way you know to get past this, this point so well you know in the situation in the world today with this pandemic is uh stressful in so many ways and some people don't handle the stress well yeah it's not good it's not good i've been there know about it um the other thing rich how about the uh the national coin shortage <laughs> i mean <laughs> please i don't want to get the market of beast Please turn in your coins so we don't have to go to a cashless society. Oh my gosh. I, I'm not going to go to Publix with a tattoo on my arm. Well, I saw um, a picture of a guy going through Starbucks, and it said, no change, and uh, use electronic transaction. And um, I'm almost wondering if I need to go to the bank, get all my money out of the bank, <laughs> and stick it in the hole. Mine is out. Yours is out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... Um, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on where that's going because I well, can't Well, you know, I, I think the the mint is actually printing less. And I think that kind of just tells you that people lose it or whatever in, in massive quantities. they got to keep doing it. Well, maybe they were using their change to buy toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Exchanging it. Exchanging it. And then um, this is a good one. Okay. How about Kanye West uh, announced a few days ago that he was running for president. Yeah. I don't know who I'm going to vote for now because he's not. Well, you know, he's got a good smile. <laughs> I, 
I was so disappointed yesterday when I heard the news. I'm thinking, my gosh, you know, you got Trump, you got Biden, and you got Kanye. I would do this, I think, for Kanye, right? <laughs> this, this works for me, huh? So, so we have Kanye. Now, you know, I looked into that a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Of course, Kim Kardashian is first lady. I imagine that would be really cool. Yeah. Or it would be different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they would have their own sitcom. I think the only time that they would have a nationally recognized, what is it, Wednesday night on, uh, what's, what's they, what network are they on? I don't but know. But they would have the Kardashians live from the White House every I think, Wednesday. But I think it would be very entertaining. Yeah. You know, especially were, when you get North by Northwest. What is their, what's their kid's name, North by Northwest or something? It is something like that. <laughs> Or he's from the Rose Garden. You know, if they're like Trump, give people in the family jobs. You know, what about Bruce? <laughs> what would his job be there in the, in the White House? In the White House. But here, these are some statistics because on on Kanye's Twitter, um, he put out there, "Who would you vote for? Would it be Kanye, Trump, or Biden?" And there were five hundred ninety-one thousand eight hundred and twelve votes, and this was the outcome. For Kanye, 48.1%. For Trump, 14.2%. And for Biden, 37.7%. What does it say about your own site that you don't get over 50% though? <laughs> I don't know. But I, I mean, mean he, did, he did well. He um, did, but I mean, you, it's his site. People like him following him. And he didn't get 50%. But he's very, I mean, how do you expect the president of the United States to get 50%? But he's very clever because, see, he was going to give his votes to Donald Trump. Oh, and you think that's what? And so that's 48 and 14. He's going to wipe Biden out. I know. So, so he did. He apologized to Trump and said, hey, man, I was just kidding. Um, but I know one thing. If he was president, I bet you marijuana would be legal across all 50 states. That would be an inauguration day change right there. <laughs> I think I as soon as he did, they'd be sparking up. They would. <laughs> right on the lawn. I'm sure they would. Uh, they'd probably hold it on 420. <laughs> Inauguration this year is going to be 420. Uh, 420. So um, I guess getting down to serious business. Um, is something serious? Well, you know, this, this is called the vent. Right. And so we wanted it to be a platform where uh, folks could actually call in and get things off their chest. Um, I mean, all kinds of topics. You know, I know right now everyone is so political. Everyone is, is, is anxious about the COVID, um, the protests. I mean, everything coming at us at one time. Um, instead of people venting, they, they seem to be more opinionated. But the vent really is, is to have people actually be able to just let loose, feel safe, and, and be able to get things off their chest. Right. You know, um, so, but today, I thought a good topic would be fear in America. Mm -hmm. You know, how is everything going right now as far as um, feeling afraid and scared and fearful? Um, I, I know you say you don't have no fear. Well, I, you know, if you threw me out of a plane, I'd be scared. <laughs> but, um, you know, life is too... Too unknowing, uh, that's not the word I'm looking for, but you don't know what's going to happen to you when you walk out your door. Um, and I am not going, and, and I'll say it this way. I had a young, uh, an, an elderly lady, um, I'm in the tax business, I just got through with my, uh, my season, and I had her, her daughter call me from Allentown, Pennsylvania, and called me and said, I need you to go and help my mom. She lives in Northport, Florida. I need somebody to do it. She used to go to XYZ service and they're not open now. And she's 85 years old and she never leaves her house. She's so scared. Wow. And I'm thinking, and I told her, I mean, I'll be honest with you, talk about vent, I'm gonna be as transparent. I said, I'll tell you her first name. I said, Doris, you're 85 years old. <laughs> You've lived a really good life. I said, I would not live the rest of my days in fear. She has a place up in New Hampshire she wanted to go to. I said, I'd get on that plane and go. And 
you know, the chances that you're going to catch this are minuscule and definitely not worth you sitting in this house for the last four months. She's gone out twice. 85 years old. I <clears throat> do not want my friends, my clients, my colleagues, anyone to sit there and, and be living in fear. That's just wrong. I mean, you know, there's too many things that we can do to keep this from happening. There's 10 million people that live with immune compromised systems every day. You think about people that have organ transplants. You think about people that are on chemotherapy and their immune system is nothing. Right. They can die of a, a sinus infection. Right. And they have learned to deal with it. They don't live in fear. They just learn to deal with it. And that's what this country has got to do. And quit living in fear of catching something that you, you know, it's airborne. You have no clue where it could be. They said one of the worst places to be in your house with air conditioning. Well, how many people in Florida, 21 million people are going to turn their air conditioning off? Well, now they say the heat. Now the heat is causing it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I have to admit, you know, I, I have fear. Um, I remember in December, we, we had 24 Christmas concerts. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I was moaning and groaning about being so busy, and but I just wanted to keep it going, keep it going to see how much we could actually bring in financially in the month of December. You know, how many concerts, how much product sales, CD sales, uh, and all that, and and that's a hard schedule. I mean, that's that's a lot of concerts. Right. You know, you don't have time to to regroup. You don't have time to come off the one the night before to get ready for the one the next day, and. So you're, it's almost like you have, you're bipolar, you know, you're up and down the, like 24 days. And, but I was thinking after that, you know, accomplishment after uh, Christmas, that 2020 was going to be a fantastic year. This year, 19 was awesome. We nailed it. Now this year we're going to do much better. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, we kept our schedule going because, you know, we live here where there's a lot of snowbirds. So January, we were pumping out concerts and CD sales and making a plan for my band and I, the Miami Sound Machine, to actually go on tour this year. Right. You know, we were going to come out after being dormant for 13 years and go out and do this big tour and, and re, just regenerate ourselves. And, um, and then this thing hit. So uh, what happened? Well, but guess what? It has given you an opportunity to sit back and think, okay, that might not be possible anymore. And you're thinking the vent. This right. is born out of COVID. It is. And you've kind of pivoted, and that's what people have to do. There's always challenges in your life. I mean, you know, holy cow, you sit there and you think about going to work and you get in an accident and you might never be the same and you have to pivot. You know, something happens in your life and you've taken lemons and you've made lemonade. And, yeah. and, and so don't let something that seems absolutely horrid change you for the worse. Think of ways that and opportunities and that's what you did. You and Brandy sat down and y'all created something out of it. Well, she told me yesterday that this wasn't her idea, because I asked if she, <laughs> I asked if she would be my co-host. Wrong. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute, this wasn't my idea. <laughs> but there were just so many things. Yeah, where there is Brandy? There Brandy? was the there was the COVID, then the protest, and then the riots. Which I became very emotionally involved in the riots, especially when they hit Nashville. Mm -hmm. I was so upset about that. And then, <clears throat> but you know, as as we as time went through with some of this. You know, then I started thinking about what, what it would feel like to be on the other side. And then I started feeling the compassion of a lot of these folks. And uh, so we had that. And uh, we might have our first caller calling in. <clears throat> so let's see. Let's see what happens here. Hello there. Welcome to the vent. Hey, guess who this is, buddy? Oh, my goodness. Dave. Yep. Let me let me cue you up here a little bit louder, Dave. All righty. Talk a little bit louder there, buddy. We got a friend of mine named uh, Dave Heaton. And um, boy, where are you calling from, Dave? Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. 
Where are you calling from, Dave? Well, hey, I really like the format of this thing, too, because, you know, we've got too much to be mad about. And if anyone has a right to be mad, let me tell you a little bit about my situation. Um, well, first of all, I got a fight, uh, stage four brain cancer I was diagnosed with uh, over four years ago. And they told me, you got about six months left, about 13 months at the most. So, like I usually do on my life, I don't pay attention, so I just kept on living and everything. So, I was getting pretty bored with that, so I decided last year to have a major heart attack. So, I had a big old heart attack. They put me in the hospital, and I, and I made a new persona. I called myself Turd Ferguson. I got myself a big old hat and, and a shirt with a name, and I went around the hospital with that. So, that got pretty boring after a while. So, this last weekend, I had a really nasty hit on a car crash. And the airbag blew off in my face. And if you've never felt nothing like that, just stick your head in the oven because that's about the heat of that thing. Wow. Then just knock yourself around like you're in a washing machine. Wow. So that took me a lot of days. So I just got out of the hospital yesterday. And actually, the only thing I care about is am I going to make it to church or not? And am I going to make it, you know, and be to the show on time and everything? And mm -hmm. So, you know, I just uh, was able to do it. But you know, Dave, you've been an, actually an inspiration to me because you actually have a real bucket list and you've been nailing every single one of them. Can you share yeah. some of those bucket list things that you've done? Yeah, I was hoping also to get on, I need to get COVID because then I could have beat all the major big things at one time. And that's another thing that ticked me off. When I was in the hospital, when you first went in the emergency room, you, know, you put the mask on and everyone looked like they were paying attention. Uh, as soon as they shut that door, nobody's got the mask on anymore. And the rest of the time there, I go, do I need to put my mask on? No. Everyone's walking around the hospital, emergency room, everything. No mask, no nothing. And mm -hmm. then they did two of the tests to, to test for it and everything. I was fine there. So we hit it and sort of ticked me off. And then I tried to get my medical marijuana renewal card, and I've been still waiting for that in the mail for about a month. And that's one thing I really, that helps me. One of the few things that helped me is the um, THC, CBD, right. either by the joint or the capsule, but it's all, it only helps me. This isn't a drug to get me a buzz or nothing. The best it ever does is I feel normal after taking it. And so now, you know, just trying to play the games and that surprised me also that everything's a cash deal. First, you got to go to a medical marijuana doctor, and that's all cash, like 250 bucks or something. And then you play the licensing game, then everything you buy at the store is all cash. And go to, go to a medical marijuana store and play you know, credit card, and that's all cash. If you don't have the cash, you get out of here until you do and come back. So that's what the, you know, <laughs> that's one of the few things that ticked me off. You know, that's nothing compared to, like, you know, one fortunate thing I've done, God's done to me is I've traveled around the world. I've been to all seven continents. I've been to 49 states, 44 countries. And I see how blessed we are, not only in this country, but how much he cares about everyone. I could never understand the, um, you know, the, the not liking or the all lives matter and all that and everything. I, I've known that for years and years and years because I've seen how God treats people around the world. He doesn't care about any more about one than the other. He loves us all. Right. So that's one of the fortunate things of getting to be around the world and seeing, even like, um, you know, I go to a different country. I go to Uganda or something. Uh, you want to play some American music? And I say, no, I'd like to hear exactly how you live. I want to eat the food you eat, and I want to listen to the music you do. And I want to worship like you worship. So I've had some really cool adventures living like they do. This is one of my favorite things. Well, Dave, on, your, um, on that bucket list, because you haven't said anything about your bucket list yet, what was the favorite thing that you got to do because you're an extremist. What's the favorite There's thing that you got to cool do? cool things. I drove a race car to 184. I, I skydived several times. got one more to do. I, I've flown a fighter jet. I've flown a, a jungle jet in the jungle. I uh, drove a tank and pushed a car, which is one of my funner things to do. <laughs> he <And> did. <laughs> <laughs> where did you do that? <laughs> I want to know where that <laughs> is. <laughs> Oh, over in Melbourne, you can do it. Oh. It's called Tank America in Melbourne. And God you know, bless America. <laughs> know, right? you know, yeah, no kidding. That's what I say, too. You know, I was happier than a fly and a, oh, oh, there goes the old noise. No, I mean, that was just some of the great things. But really going around the, 
uh, seeing the different parts of the world and going to Antarctica. As soon as I've been to Antarctica, I called, uh, um, this is uh, the Garden of Eden South. Because it was the most beautiful beauty with nobody missing, nothing, no houses anywhere. There's a few uh, science stations, but, you know, you're a 24-hour sun. It never goes down. It just goes in a circle around the sky. And it's just an amazing, beautiful place to see. And the other thing is hardly anyone wants to go there. I just want to go a place no one wants to go. Yeah. So that, that was But you're, you're, missing, you're missing the thing I was thinking the most was I, th I thought your best moment was meeting Aaron Abu when he was playing in concert. Oh, I mean, I thought I didn't know you meant legendary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're like me. We're both legends in our own mind. No, so I'm like just it. kidding. Oh, but just I forgot kidding. my favorite place. Actually, the Holy Land is my favorite place I've ever been. Jerusalem. I'd go back the third time because I love that place so much. Well, Dave, man, I appreciate you calling, buddy. Yes, so, it's a bit, I, brother. So, and I, I need that address in Melbourne because I want to go crush a car with the Well, tank. you ought to go shooting at the range with this guy. He brings all the stuff, all the goodies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there's another place in Texas where you can actually fire the tank. But that's like $3,000 a shot. I know too many kids and that people that need help before I'd waste money like that. Have credit card, we'll travel. <laughs> I know, right? I think I'd rather rent a Lamborghini for a couple of days there. No, one one eighty eight caliber. <laughs> well, you heard about the cute, cool funeral I'm going to have, didn't you? The what? At my funeral, I'm going to have them right before they close the casket. Play Pop Goes the Weasel, and then have them take a video and, and see how many people what they do. And then for the uh, after that, I'm going to take the bouquet off the casket and throw it in the crowd. Whoever catches its neck. And then uh, the third thing I got is for my <laughs> will. Next. I'm. I'm I'm giving all my kids a taser, and the last one standing wins. Hey, can you do Pretty me a favor and put me in that will, please? I'll, I'll give you all the details after we uh, get finished the show. <laughs> but if oh, you're yeah. throwing out the <laughs> casket, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna attend. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's. I don't want to catch the bouquet there. There's AR-15s in that bear at 50 cal, man. Just remember, Jerry oh, that's Doyle. The <laughs> that's the craziest thing I've ever done because. Nobody else on my block has done it. In fact, nobody else on the internet has done it. Wow. Is to take a 50 Magnum pistol and take a 50 caliber Barrett sniper rifle, shoot with one hand, each with one hand at the same time. Nobody wow. else is stupid enough to even try it but me. Well, buddy, I'm going to let another caller come in here. But, hey, man, you've been an inspiration mm -hmm. uh, since I've known you for the last three years or so. So. Well, good uh, luck and, and stay out of cars for a yeah, few days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. Next time, just cut your own airbag out because I don't <laughs> think you can be hurt worse <laughs> than an airbag punch you in your face, okay? Well, have a have a blessed day, Dave. Okay, I'll talk to you, you later. God bless you, brother. All right. Bye, okay. buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye -bye. okay. As soon as this is over, <clears throat> I want you to get your sledgehammer and you're going to hit the front of my car and let my airbag <laughs> deploy. <laughs> Well, we need to do that on the show. <laughs> I wouldn't wait until this is over. Well, we'll do it on your car. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the Lamborghini. <clears throat> well, I do want to say something here. I'm going yes. That is amazing about Dave, though. I the, mean, good gosh. The person that was responsible for my career. I mean, I know you have to have the talent, and you have, you know, I had to get a running start. I had a CD out. Mm -hmm. But this fella named Tony Smith, was um, a dear friend, and we produced, I think, a total of six or seven albums with uh, Tony Smith. And um, he passed away a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> and I had planned on maybe doing one more album with him. Right. Now, Tony, back in the earlier days, worked alongside David Foster for seven years on projects like... Um, Barbara Streisand and Lionel Richie, right. Chicago, um, Whitney Houston on The Bodyguard. And when I met him, he was actually working with a blonde-haired lady in Nashville, Tennessee. Which, Would that be Dolly? Well, it could be. Is that Dolly? <clears throat> there he is right there, he and Dolly. And he always mentioned about how she likes to record her vocals in the bedroom. Now, I'd be a little tim intimidated. I know. I'm going, oh, I bet you do. <laughs> I, I would be a little intimidated by that. I'd probably scared to death. Yeah. But um, she was always so cool, and 
And he is the one that got Dolly to sing with me on I Will Always Love You. Right. And it's all because of Tony that my career did what it did. And did she sing those in the bedroom? Um, or were you there when that? <laughs> I don't know. I was hiding. I was hiding in the back. So I will show um, another really cool picture of uh, Tony and I. This is when we lived on the, what we call the River Home over in Rockledge, Florida, there by Cocoa Village. And uh, that's Tony next to me. And Which one's you? No, I'm just joking. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm just joking. That was before COVID. I was about 20 pounds lighter in that picture. And how many pounds, how many years younger? Oh my, well, it's probably six years, six years or so. You're still looking good, man. Hey, I don't know. So if anyone else would like to call in, you know, we've, we'd like to talk to you and hear, you know, maybe what you have to vent about, get off your chest, um, any pains, any struggles you have going on. And, um, you know, this line is open for you. In uh, just a couple of minutes here, I think we're going to have some specialty margaritas served Ooh. to us. Yeah. So, you know, I know it's almost 5 o'clock here. And it is 5 o'clock somewhere. It's always 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> That's right. So uh, we'll have a little According to Jimmy. Mexican communion. <laughs> is that politically okay to say? Sure. Okay. This is the vent. This is the vent. You can say anything. So uh, again, if you want to call in, uh, our line is open. It's 941-468-5836. Give us a call. Let's talk about some things that maybe you might need to get off your chest. Um, I didn't pay enough people to call in. You know, and maybe they don't have anything. Got, you know, Facebook is a really good way of getting things <laughs> off your chest. <laughs> we need to get them to call in to the vent. Call us. Here comes hey, a call. Got... Ocala, Florida. Welcome, I think, Ocala, Florida. Hey there. This is Sarah. Hey, Sarah. How are hey, how are y'all? I'm doing good. fine. How are you? Hey, good. I just want to thank you for putting this on. Put putting the vent on and we can all vent or do what we you know, we need to say and all. It's a it's a blessing. Well, um Sarah vent we, for us, please. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm gonna tell you my my heart. Um, yesterday, when you put it on um, online to get, you know, ideas, and every, there was about five, four or five women that came on that had lost their husband. Well, I lost my husband like seven and a half years ago, and that is the biggest fear you'll ever have in your life when you're going to be by yourself. Right. Um, I still struggle, but God brought me through it because of um, He had to show me that He was real. But there's so many hurting people out there that um, they don't know where to go. And this this is just a great platform that we can get help and know that we're not by ourselves. And that's what you definitely need to know is you're not by yourself. You need to reach out to people and not be scared to reach out. Um, that's you know, it. I don't know if anyone alive right now has ever been through a pandemic. Oh, this is no. terrible. No. I mean, a worldwide pandemic and the you know i understand that it gives a lot of fear and mm -hmm. and but we can't let the fear control our lives we need to learn to deal with it and i think you know learning the safe way to avoid trying to get this or being able to get this is one of those things and you know i for the longest time said i'm just not a mask kind of guy <laughs> but i will tell you you know I, i'm changing my ways because you know, seat belts help save people, but people still die. Right. But less people do if you wear a seat belt. Right. Right. Well, I, I got where I was kind of lackadaisical about the mask. Right. And then I decided, well, and I went and got tested. But then I, I said, well, hey, I'm going to wear my mask. Right. Whether and it, if it helps other not, people. If, whatever it does, I don't care, right. you know. So. You know, I was telling a friend of mine, I said, you know, we would not think twice about if we saw a homeless person and they were cold, giving them a coat. Amen. Why wouldn't we do the same thing with our mask? It might help it. It's not going to benefit us, but right. it could benefit them. And, and exactly. I think that's what you need to look at. So. Amen. 
Well, well, well I appreciate Sarah, you. thank you so much, Sarah, for calling in and uh, and uh, you know you're my special sister. <laughs> you're my special brother. And I, I appreciate on. you watching the show. This is going to be a great platform. It's gonna it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be you know you deserve a uh, you deserve one of these. Oh, how sweet. So, bye, y'all. Hey, bye, Sarah. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye now. So the cool thing is, is we have the ability to call people back. We and, do. And see if they are game to talk to us or if it was a wrong phone number. <laughs> Hi. Hey there. You style a prayer? This is dial. It's dial whatever you want to dial here. <laughs> It's the vent. <laughs> it's the vent. And I have the ability to call you back. So okay, cool, man. can you introduce your wonderful self? And Yes, I can do that. This is Bob Donovan up in Sarasota. Bob. Hey, Bob. I'm loving it, man. The only, the only thing I want to vent about is why we all can't uh, look at it kind of like Einstein did. You know, with a crisis, there's always an opportunity behind it. And this day and age we just got to think out of the box and that's what you're doing Aaron right. um, yeah, you're thinking out you. of the box and uh, this is just one small, small step for mankind as they say right and uh, I just think it's terrific because we all got to embrace the technology that's out there that's right. uh, to get ourselves out there to do a, a number of different things I think that's what you're doing uh, I, I think it's terrific I think the show is good um you're doing a great job. Just, just more of the same, you know. Do you like what we're wearing, Bob? I, I this... yeah. I, you know, is it wrong for me to say? Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the broke back type of cowboys. Oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about ready for our drinks here in a minute. Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we I'm have, and we'll keep you on the phone, Bob. I don't know if you have anything to sit with us, but <laughs> oh, uh, oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, Look what is coming in here. Okay, I'm gonna. Is it coming in? What kind? What kind of? What kind of? Woo! Kind look of at that girl. girl. I'm gonna <laughs> trade you. Getting all the beauty today. Yeah. Hey, even cowboy drink drinks with it frilly sure things on it. Pink. I I just I. He's I, got I, a pink I, umbrella. I Cheers. just remember. I just remember what uh, Willie uh, and Willie said. Don't let Sorry you. Sorry to interrupt. Don't let your children grow up to be cowboys. That's all I know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> you didn't I take offense to that, Bob. <laughs> you didn't sleep in our guest bedroom tonight. <laughs> hey, Listen, take care, guys. Have a great show. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Thank, thank you. you for calling, my Appreciate friend. Appreciate it. We'll be seeing you, okay? All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. So we are... I grew up to be a cowboy. I, I, I'm from North Carolina, but I talk like I'm from... Where? North Carolina? <laughs> you do. You do. These are um, our drinks. These are our top shelf margaritas for the day. Um, to the vet. Uh, I'd call these uh, cowboy margaritas. But All right. But this is a little too broke back for me. Man. I'm just <laughs> in here. Did anybody ever see that movie? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Did you? But the thing is, is... I had to look it up. You you made some reference yeah, to it the yeah. whole time, and I'm going, huh? <laughs> I don't know if I want to go down that path. So we, we had a few missed calls here. I'm going to call someone back from um, Please Minia- back. Minia- Minneapolis. Minneapolis? Is that how you pronounce that? Minneapolis? Minneapolis. Minneapolis? Yeah. Minnie. Hello. Hello there. Hey. Welcome to the you're, vent. You're getting a call back from these crazy people on the vent. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't even give you a chance to probably sip your margarita yet, did you? Oh, but we did. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a, I'm a Jack Daniels and Coke kind of girl, to be honest. You should, you should, you should be on the vet tomorrow. <laughs> <'Cause> I... <laughs> so you're a brown liquor I... kind of woman, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've actually been to the Jack Daniels um, distillery, my husband and I, my husband Jack. It was really fun. So you, so you married a guy named Jack? Yes, and ironically enough, I know he's probably not going to like this, but the statue at the distillery and the picture of him standing next to Jack Daniels, they could be brothers, I'm telling you. There you go. You get a clap. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. So uh, she's more of a cowboy than I am. Wow. I'm I'm drinking margaritas. Can you state your wonderful name and where you're calling from? 
This is Leanne Soddy, and I am calling from the Cocoa Beach area. Okay. Ooh. Leanne. Leanne man. from Cocoa Beach. I think mm-hmm. Leanne has been very instrumental in helping making sure that things are going properly on the event. Thank you so very much. Yeah. We should, oh, well, you're welcome. You're I getting, think the hardest thing is trying to get everybody to, it's a vent, but not a banter and a get mad at each other kind of thing. Well, this is how the vent, one of the ways the vent started was I was getting my hair done. You're, I was getting done. I have hair. <laughs> getting my hair done. I don't. Getting my hair done. And, um, and this other hairstylist came in all upset and asked the hairstylist of mine if he could get something off his chest, if he could vent. You mind if I vent for a minute? No, and you I'm, go right ahead and vent. I'll listen. And so he was venting, and he said, you know, this lady, even though she's my best client, um, she cancels on me last minute all the time. And now I have two hours where I'm not making any money. And so I'm sitting there going, the vent, the vent. That's a great thing, a great platform. That's how this whole thing started. I just don't know that I would have admitted that I went to go get your hair done. That's not very cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, but have you but have you seen Aaron's hair? I have. Yeah, have it's you had a chance? Gorgeous, have you had it? a chance to run your hands through my hair? <laughs> it's just gorgeous. I may. I gotta admit. Well, do you have anything that you need to get off your chest? Yes, I, I do. I, I think that it's very disheartening, and it bothers me tremendously that people can't have a conversation, and mostly it's probably mostly social media, but can't have a conversation in respect what the other person is saying and sometimes it's not that someone is saying something because they want to change their mind you know or someone else's mind kind of thing and I think that's that's the hardest part of everybody wants everybody to not be like them but yet everybody wants everybody to think like them and and that's a, a, a I think it's actually our probably our number one problem right now is that people just don't want to listen they want to change your mind and change his mind and change her mind and and that's not how we're that's not how we're geared that's not how we're made yeah my wife's been trying to do that now for uh, 11 years (laughs) well she's not done yet she's got another 11 more to go (laughs) how about your wife rich she gave up a long time ago oh 33 and a half years ago (laughs) you know you know i you can see it though leanne you can see um even the on the vent group you can see that people aren't actually themselves right now so i yeah you know you you have to give them a little leeway there that um people are afraid just like we talked about right now there's a lot of fear there and, is there is there is a lot of fear and and i think sometimes it i think and we even had it and i have to give kudos to the gentleman um who i had made a comment on and said you know what and he he apologized and that kind of thing so i i give kudos to the gentleman that was able to step back a little bit because they do you get scared and you start typing and you start talking and you start being afraid of of honestly what could happen you know there's a what if and a and if when kind of situation you know i was on the phone yesterday with um someone named margo over, a matter of fact, she works for the uh, Space Coast, um, um, sh- whatever they call that over there. Uh, SpaceX. SpaceX. Mm-hmm. And, yes, uh, SpaceX. She, she's uh, been with them for quite some time, and and we're on the phone, and she's trying to help in- encourage me to look at an artist that is posted on our Facebook, and she just started crying all of a sudden. She goes, "You know what?" Mm. She goes, "Aaron, I believe, I believe the rapture is here." She goes, "I believe." That, that this is the time. So she was had so much fear going on that she just lost it on the phone. And I think a lot of people have been talking about that, you know, um, that this could be the rapture. But on the flip side of that, there, it's good to have the fear to a certain extent. But as a, as a Christian myself, the end times and 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 that kind of thing is kind of what we look forward to because this is not heaven on earth as they like to say no, um, it's not. and so we uh, we trade that fear for faith and hopefully that that can 
lessen and smooth over some of some of that fear the biggest thing is is faith is inside but what we see around us on the outside what we see on the tv what we hear in the news what we hear the neighbors talking about what we see on social media that accelerates our fear right so we have to have a balance between the fear and the faith and if faith goes way down on the bottom and fear overtakes it which is exactly what satan wants then we end up we end up having more fear and i think that's when we become less caring for people um and worried about um you know we got to talk someone into believing this because this is how it should be not that way and we are never going to change people's minds if they are f feared into believing what it is they truly believe you know one of the things that i think people need to understand is I, they fear because they feel like they're not good enough and mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of times they don't understand the grace of god grace that is so overwhelming because they don't experience that grace by the humans god mm -hmm. gave his only son to die for us and if you read romans 10 you'll see even paul he was like i believe but i can't mm -hmm. be what you think I'm going to be. I feel like I, I want to be so good, but I can't. And how how do I, how am I worthy? And you just got to understand, God understands that. And he and is he, going yes, to forgive exactly. you. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He wants you to be perfect, but he doesn't expect you to be perfect. If he, would, if he expected you to be perfect, he would never send Jesus. To, exactly. To and, take and that's, all that's, of that sin away from us. Exactly, and that's where grace and forgiveness play a you know play a mutual part. You know, that's we why have I have no fear. Ourselves. Yes, exactly, exactly. Myself the same. You know, we no give ourselves forgiveness because we are going to do wrong, we are going to sin, but we give ourselves that forgiveness, and then others that sin against us, we give them the grace yeah. and the and forgiveness. Romans three it talks about the fact that God says is that He is the only good. Mm -hmm. None of us are good enough. None, not one. Man, you preach it, boy. And, <laughs> and well, I just want people to understand. Don't fear that. God's got exactly. that under control. All you exactly. need to do is say, "Jesus, you're my savior." I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. I will never, ever live up to what God expects. If you we did, you would never need yeah. Jesus. Exactly. It just it exactly. And Sorry. and so for those who are walking in fear, really for those who are walking in fear, if they could just change trade that fear for faith, for faith and acceptance and yes and and I and I think eventually it'll come. But you know we're not supposed to live in happily ever after down here. It's not supposed to be. I mean it says brothers and sisters will fight amongst each other's and husbands and wives and you know mothers and fathers and children and it's just it's going the way that it's supposed to go I'm afraid it's probably not the nicest thing to say but amazing <laughs> <laughs> he foretold this 2,000 years ago yeah oh. think about that hmm. uh, you, you should say wow maybe I should start believing what it was written <laughs> so Leanne we're gonna get you over here and you can bring Jack and Jack yeah Jack oh and Jack, Jack and Jack. Jack. Jack Jack and Jack and a little we Tito's, do, please. We do, and, and, yeah, exactly. Well, and guess we have the dog, too, um, Aaron. The dog's name is Gentleman Jack Jackson because he is a black and white and tan Sheltie. So he's black and white like oh, a Jack perfect. Daniels bottle. Perfect. And he's tan like the whiskey. So I am I waiting am, for you to come over. Do you know? <laughs> you know. I'm a very blessed woman. I am very, very blessed. I have a most wonderful husband who is not trying to change me, and he already knows he ain't going to get nowhere. It ain't going to so. work. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it but just the way I am. You know what's interesting about Lynchburg, Tennessee, though? You know, that's a dry county. Yes. Yes. So that's very interesting that Jack Daniels is, is hubbed in a dry county. Of course, obviously, somebody's being <laughs> paid off. Well, you know, that's the whole thing about economic mm. development. You're bringing money from outside. Yes, you do. In, <laughs> put it in thinking. your community. Yep, I think he was thinking when he placed it where he did. So I think there was some. Yes, Jack and I, and maybe even gentleman Jack Jackson, would love to come over to that area and visit at some point. We well, definitely would. You got to invite well, you back. To make that trip. I tell you, there's one good thing when you come over here. First of all, we'll have good drinks. 
And then mm-hmm. second of all, we'll have good food. Um, our sponsor Ooh. for today, Leanne, is a is a restaurant called Yummies. This right is down here, the road from here. Right down the road. Now they are donuts and barbecue. So if you saw that sticky pig I had on the table, <laughs> they the, are donuts and barbecue. Yes, I saw that. You saw that, Jack. Jack likes them separate. He likes his donuts in the morning and his barbecue in the evening. No. You gotta yeah, you gotta put barbecue between two Obviously, donuts. Obviously Jack isn't like Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West. I bet you Kanye yeah. eats his together late at night. Uh, you know, you gotta. He probably does. Um Well, you know what? When it comes to Kanye, therein lies the grace. <laughs> Give her, <laughs> give her a day. Yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> there in yeah. lies the grace. <laughs> oh my goodness, but, that was um, the best one. You know, I, I have to say, I do miss living on the river over there. You know, there's. It is beautiful over here, but I know it's beautiful over there too. But yes. We well, this is a picture of, of the river over there. Of the river, and mm-hmm. we were official tree huggers. I actually had. We are not actually on the river right now, <laughs> even no, though that looks great. I, I had Brandy take a picture of me hugging a tree out in the front yard because that is the that was our front yard view. And believe it yeah, or not, it beautiful. I am a capitalist, but I drive a Prius. <laughs> so, and I'm a capitalist that believes in, in in saving the world. And therein lies the grace. I do therein too. lies the grace. Thank you so much. I believe in saving the world too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so and remember, exactly yummies when you come over here. Vent. That's right. I did. I did. See, this vent. is a creation from God Himself, yes. right here. It is. Oh, oh, oh! oh. My Leanne, gosh. before you hang up, I don't know, but you've got a. I don't know if you can Wait, smell you this to, over the phone. Do you want dessert first, like normally? No, we we'll just we'll just put it. You can actually put it all on the table, babe. I can. Uh, yeah, I can. It smells oh, good. It smells like. Um, my goodness. Heaven. Like, it smells like heaven. heaven. Oh, wow. <laughs> it okay. smells like. Rapture. We're going to do something else here. Look at this. Look. look These look. are homemade chips. Oh my goodness. It looks like they're sprinkled homemade with feta too. cheese. And That's there is perfect. a smoked pork. Are y'all pork, seeing this? Oh my goodness. A smoked pork. Um, panini. No, it's not a panini. It's a Oh, there's some of those oh, my goodness. luscious. Oh, oh, she almost <laughs> dropped the donuts on the floor. Oh, don't drop the hey, donuts. Please. You know, there's one thing I can do real well is ad lib on the saxophone. Ad libbing on a show might be a different story. Oh, but story. I can. I can even do it with my mouth closed. Hold on a second here. We've... You can do it with your mouth closed? Uh-huh. Full, 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 full of go. donuts and barbecue. Put your bags on. Yeah, put your this is so on cowboy right here. Yo, Mr. Brokeback. But Leanne, you know, I appreciate number one. Hey, if you want to be my, our administrator on that on that thing, you are more than welcome to be. I have to say that it pays quite well. <laughs> yeah, sure it does. Donuts and barbecue? Donuts and barbecue. All you can possibly eat. <laughs> I mean, look at these chips. Look at these the chips. chips. I could do. Yes, the chips look good. You know what's interesting though is the the owner. Are y'all of, hearing that? The owner of Yummies, <laughs> the owner of Yummies lost 120 pounds. What? Well, he had all these pictures when I went to pick up this food. You know, of like accolades and people coming in and photographs. Mm-hmm. And I saw Alan, and uh, I was like, "Whoa, Alan, how'd you lose so much weight?" And he said he was taking a diet pill, but they started using these uh, air fryers oh okay yes yeah. so not doing it in deep fat <laughs> breaking we news love our air donut we owner our does air keto <laughs> yeah. so. we use our air fryer all the time we like it because then one one you don't get the grease smell in the house and two you're not you know absorbing all that grease and eating it so we we use our air fryer quite a bit that deserves another clap then yeah <laughs> I would love to be an administrator on the on the on the link for you. That would be that would be fun. Well, hired. <laughs> well, this show this is this is actually the first episode is is kind of a um, uh, an experiment. Yeah. Of course. It's an experiment because you know we. <laughs> That's why you hired me. <laughs> I have to get him back by five o'clock. Yeah. Has he yeah. finished that drink yet? And I'm allowed to say this because I have a brother that rode the small bus. So, did you ride the oh. small bus? 
Everybody right. tells me what they is, did, but... What's the small bus? No, but my brother... Is that the ones that are for mentally... In... <laughs> my brother, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. You know, God bless his heart, man. He rode the little bus, and he and Ruth Ann have been married happily now for 25 years. And he has a job with benefits. My parents always said, get a job with benefits. Mm -hmm. And so I became a lifeguard. <laughs> are you, you still there, in Northport. Are you still with us? I'm still with you. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where the benefits fit in. Well, the, <laughs> all the beer you can drink, all the girls. You don't know the benefits of being a lifeguard. I, well, see, you know, I'm, I, I grew up kind of all over. I have moved down here to Florida in 05, and so I was 30 years up in Minnesota, and five years in Illinois, and four years in Missouri, so a lifeguard, no. Now, I know the benefits of a cowboy, but not a lifeguard. <laughs> Do you like cowboys? Cowboy hat, yes, sir. You do? Mm hmm. Jack's from Kentucky. Oh, he is. What part of Kentucky is Jack from? Out, outside of Louisville. Oh, wow. Nice. Yep. Nice. You know, the neat thing about Kentucky and Tennessee, on a Sunday morning when you've got everyone packed up and you're going to church, if you come mm -hmm. to that Y in the road, usually it says church to the left and the distillery to the right. So <laughs> at that point, you can make a quick decision to go right. If you're not feeling left, it just yeah, it just well, God is everywhere. So you could still go God to the is everywhere. And pray on the way. Absolutely, right. absolutely. <laughs> Leanne, I really appreciate you calling in so much. Thank well, you, Leanne. I appreciate. Oh, you are most welcome, and we'll we'll head over that way, and I'll have, we'll we'll have me on the show if you want. We're going to take one more crazy call. call here. Sounds good. Right. Thanks, guys. Leanne, thank you. thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye, Hen. Hello there. Who's calling from Hagerstown, Maryland? Hello. Is this, is this Charlie Pope? You got it. Charlie oh my Pope. gosh, we have the Pope. <laughs> we hang your missing. All hang your missing on that table is a great big Maryland crab cake. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, Charlie, that's actually on our recipe list. Is it? It is. All right. And you didn't right. invite me for that one. <laughs> the Maryland okay, crab that's... cake. <laughs> Charlie's I mean, like Charlie's thing. really old school. He sends me these emails like every other day. There's like three or four of them, and because the ones you send by instant message, evidently I don't know if you found out, you can't open those attachments that you send. So, oh okay, yeah, but on email you can. So I get to see okay. all your cool stuff that you send to us. Yeah, I try to send you some. What's some stuff I think's interesting? And you know, as far as venting goes, yeah, my my biggest problem right now is. Tearing down all the statues and throwing all the police under the bus because a few of them are bad. I could go on and on and just let my blood pressure go up. But, you know, the biggest thing missing in this country right now is respect. It is. There's no respect anymore. Yeah. You know, well, kids, kids, kids get away with things now in school or you, when, and you get punished in school when, when I was in school. And you got punished again when you got home. Mm -hmm. And so you learned the difference between right and wrong. But there's no respect in this country right now. And that's our biggest problem. That's true. That's true. And look, I'm not going to stay on the phone a long time. I'm going to let you guys enjoy your drinks. Well, hey, I'm, we, we miss you all you down got. here, Charlie. We miss you and Cindy. And, um, and, and we miss Florida a lot right now. Yeah, well, you may want to wait we'll a while before soon. you come back down because it'll probably take you about two days to get past the um the gatekeeper getting into the state yeah i saw that when we came out of florida they were checking people coming in yeah so you know i have to find an alternate route <laughs> <laughs> i will get there <laughs> you're actually eating your food on tv mm -hmm. oh my goodness that's good that's oh, well, that isn't part of the script he really is <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, you can Look, find rednecks all a, over the place. Hey, Charlie, man, thanks for calling one. in. We're going to go ahead and uh, kick off our Artist Discovered series here. And um, Okay. Hey, man, we think about you all the time. Of course, yeah, we, I have no concerts, so I'm not going to look. We miss you, guys. Hey, miss you, oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's you don't have any concerts, I know. I know. But we, we miss you all, too, and uh, enjoy, and we'll chat with you later. Thank you, guys. Hey, give uh, Cindy you. a big hug and kiss for me. You got it. Hide brandy, okay? All right, we'll do. We'll do. Take care. Thank, Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
you know, down here, they they were at every single concert. Well, we're kind of limited for time. Um, we are going to uh, later um, publish when we're going to do the next episode. We're going to probably, we might take a couple weeks off because of the COVID. And um, so we're going to regroup and maybe make some different changes. We have an artist that we need to uh, Thanks, promote. Thanks, man. We have an artist. <laughs> I'll sell the show to you. We have an artist, and I want to thank all of you for watching, first of all. Thank you so much. You know, I've always said this when I do concerts. If it weren't for our fans, we wouldn't have any of it. So we really appreciate y'all. We love you. Um, we have an artist uh, in our Artist Discovered series um, named Laura, Lori Maves that is an incredible painter and artist, and we'd like to go ahead and just kick up her little video that we did for her, and she's in Sarasota, Florida. Amazing, amazing person. Her husband's amazing. Um, he's a beefy guy, man, got all kinds of muscles. But um, I want to thank you all for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. You yeah, look yeah. very cool. I didn't know you were so cool. And here we go to Lori. And we're I didn't either. Show. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. Here we go, Lori. What's that I'm not supposed to eat? My name is Lori Maves Gulyalmi. Most people just know me as Lori Maves, so sometimes I just say that because it's easier. Um, and I am an artist and an art therapist. And um, I came to Sarasota about three years ago. I moved here from after living and working in Denver for about 20 years. Um, also as an artist, as an art therapist, as a live painter. And I came to art therapy a long time ago. I was going through, I was, went to college and I was initially, I always loved art as a child. And I went to college to study um, graphic design and I really hated graphic design. I just, I didn't like it. It was, I didn't connect to it. It didn't seem to make anything. It didn't challenge me, and didn't, I didn't connect to it. And, and um, so I ended up dropping out of that program and my parents were like horrified, like, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna make money as an artist? And I learned about the field of art therapy just about the same time, and that was a master's program. So when I found that there was a way to use art to help people heal or help people process thoughts and images or help people communicate basic thoughts and feelings, that, that was something that gravitated to because I knew it was something I had been doing um, naturally my whole life with art and um, so I've been practicing as an art therapist for a long time in all kinds of different with different populations and ages and um, individuals and here in Sarasota I opened this studio about a year year and a half ago and it's a place where I can come paint and it also doubles as um, a teaching studio where I help share the creative process with people who just want to learn about painting and how painting can be used for self-expression and to reduce stress and um, to find a healthy way to be in the world and to express your thoughts and feelings. And that's kind of how I got to be here. These are all images of large abstract paintings that I have. It's kind of like a portfolio of sorts. Um, most of these all range from like four feet by five feet. Some of them are as large as uh, six foot by eight foot paintings. These actually, this series is showing in uh, a place up in Atlanta in an interior design studio. This kind of just shows the process of when I'm making them on the wall and how large they are. This piece is actually for about my grandfather. He was an outdoorsman. The bottom line, I think, with this studio also is that I encourage people just to come in and learn about painting. And there's all kinds of different classes and ways to do that. I, I have um, online classes with Zoom where people can do for fairly inexpensive. And they can just learn about some art from um, their home. And then people can come in here, hopefully in the future, when, when people feel more comfortable coming out. Um, I offer these large-scale, be-free painting classes where people can come and they get to paint for three hours and they get to work on whatever it is they want to. They can paint whatever their heart desires. They, can, they don't have to have a plan, they can have a plan. Um, that's the, the most 